working our way down the brain still, we're going to move on to what's called the midbrain. The midbrain is located just behind the diencephalon that we were just looking at. Let me just circle the diencephalon. Remember that included the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the epithalamus. Um, so this was the diencephalon that I'm circling right now. If we move just back from that a little bit, we're going to end up in this region. This is the midbrain. The midbrain sits between the diencephalon and the pons, which is this bulge right here down lower. So right here in this region, the midbrain, the midbrain has dopaminergic neurons, meaning they are neurons that release the neurotransmitter dopamine. And there are two primary pathways that the midbrain regulates. One is a pathway that functions in motor coordination. So we've already looked at that when we were talking about the basal nuclei. Um, the, the motor coordination if there's degeneration in these pathways, that can lead to, to shaking. Unintended movements do not get inhibited so much. Um, so that pathway is illustrated with these blue projections. The other pathway here, shown in red, this is a dopaminergic pathway that functions in reward, experiencing um, reward for different behaviors. So if you set a goal and you accomplish that goal and you have a sense, a re that rewarding sense that you get at the end, um, that's usually because this is the pathway that is active in your brain. Dopamine is being released and causing that reward sensation. So this does definitely tie back in with the limbic system. Um, at this point, we're at a point um, in this chapter where it's it's helpful to keep in mind that there's a lot of overlap between the different things we've been talking about. These are not necessarily isolated systems. The midbrain also is relevant in the limbic system and vice versa. But anyway, um, this reward pathway, this dopaminergic reward pathway shown in red, this is one that's implicated in a lot of drug addictions. If a person is addicted to drugs um, and the reward sense that they experience from taking that drug, a lot of times it's activating these same neurons, same pathways. And remember, with neuron pathways, the more they are activated, that's going to lead to a certain, to a certain extent, remapping of the brain. There are going to be physical changes that happen, physical bridges get built between neurons, new synapses form, um, receptors get upregulated or downregulated, and so there are physical changes that happen as a result of, of being addicted to drugs. And so that, in part at least, is why it's so hard to get unaddicted um, once a person is, is hooked on this reward pathway. If they stop, then they don't experience that reward pathway, and it takes a long time, in some cases, for the remapping to occur to the more sort of natural setting that the brain originally had. So anyway, that's uh, all tied back in with the midbrain and these dopaminergic pathways that the midbrain helps to organize. The hindbrain, moving down a little bit further, the hindbrain includes three key things. It includes the pons, it includes the cerebellum over here, and it also includes the medulla oblongata, which is this part down at the very base. Um, so what are these different regions doing? In the hindbrain, a few key things are going on. The pons, for one thing, this is housing the sensory and motor tracts that are coming from the spinal cord. So that's sort of like a major relay point between the spinal cord and the brain. Damage to the pons tends to be really, really serious. If a person um, has damage to the pons, then they may be completely paralyzed except for maybe they would still be able to breathe in some cases, um, but really serious. Damage to the pons is, is very serious because all of those tracts from the lower parts of the body have to come through this region. The cerebellum is back over here. This is another region of the brain that has gray matter on the outside, white matter on the inside. And what the cerebellum does in large part is it works with those basal nuclei that we mentioned and also the motor, motor cortex. And it helps to coordinate a lot of our movements and particularly movements that require a certain timing. Um, so if there's something moving in front of you and you want to reach out and grab it, the cerebellum is what helps you figure out the proper movements to, to make that timing work out. The medulla down here, the medulla is very critical for 
um, vital responses like breathing and also keeping the heart beating. The medulla is what controls a lot of those sorts of activities. So those are things that happen automatically. You don't have to consciously think about them. Remember, again, conscious thought is more up in the cerebrum, um, but these vital centers are regulated down lower in the medulla. So that's a really neat thing. This is also the location where a lot of the crossing over of um, signals tends to happen. So right side of the brain controlling the left side of the body and vice versa. This is in, this is in many cases where that crossing over or decussation happens. Before we completely move on from this region of the brain up here, this is just a good point to note that there is a whole nother system. It's called the reticular activating system. And this is a very coordinated pathway of neurons that help, help us to be able to tune out sensory um, information and fall asleep at night. So the reticular activating system, I won't be testing you on like, details of the, the RAS, uh, but I would like you to know that we have a system and it, the system is very key for allowing us to fall asleep because um, it allows us to tune out that sensory stimuli and it also allows us to become alert when it's time to wake up. So restart being aware of sensory input again in the morning. So the reticular activating system, again, a whole network of um, neural pathways that are right here around the, around the midbrain.